If you fancy something a little bit more upmarket than your average family car, but don't want to pay a premium for a premium brand, then the VW Passat is well worth a look. While it's desirable, it's also very practical too. For instance, on this estate version, because you can fold out the seat bases, when you put the backs down, you get a completely flat low bay. And if you don't go for a spare wheel, you get a rather large secret compartment under here. And if I just put them back, you'll see that for rear passengers, there's absolutely loads of knee and headroom. And it's pretty much a similar story on the saloon version too. As for the front, well, there's lots of useful storage cubbies. For instance, there's a big one here in the center console and it's even got auxiliary in, which is handy. There's some massive door bins where you can fit big bottles. It's a bit warm now, but it doesn't matter because in the big glove box, I've got an air conditioning outlet, which turns it into a fridge. So that'll chill that. As for the rest of the interior, the design is pretty stylish and all the controls, they're logically laid out. And I like this particular feature because it feels quite premium. To start the car, you take the key and you insert it into the dash. And that's just like on an Audi A4. And then to release the parking brake, you just hit this button. It's very easy to find an ideal driving position here in the Passat because there's loads of adjustment in the driver's seat and the steering wheel. And the footwell, well, it's nice and roomy too, which is handy if you've got big feet. Anyway, I also like the fact that all the controls, well, they're nice and weighted. They've got that solid Germanic feel to them. However, the best bit about the Passat is how it provides the perfect balance of handling and comfort. For instance, on rough roads, it's really good at soaking up all the bumps. Yet when it gets a bit twisty like this, it's actually pretty engaging too. I mean, it's not quite as much fun as a Mazda 6, but you know, it's not far off. And if you do want it to be a bit sporty, you can get stiffened sports suspension, but I wouldn't bother with that because it does make things feel a little bit firm. And that brings me on to the Passat's bad points. And I have to say one of them is the fact that at higher speeds, it can be a little bit noisy. You get a bit of wind whistle. And surprisingly, it's not actually as quiet as its smaller brother, the Golf. Also, while I'm having a moan, I'm going to complain about the fact that some of the materials in the cabin don't feel as upmarket as you'd imagine in a VW car and the fact that you don't get cruise control on the entry level model like you do on a Vauxhall Insignia is a little bit mean. Another downside is the fact that you can't get the Passat as a hatchback. It's actually only available as an estate or a saloon. Also, it's slightly more expensive to buy than its main rivals, such as the Vauxhall Insignia. That said, it will hold its value well come resale time. And overall, this car provides a happy medium between your more run-of-the-mill family cars and the more premium executive models. <laughs>